All right, here's our final section for chapter 7. This one's on recursive formulas. So we've already learned two types of recursive formulas. Those were arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. And the general definition for a recursive formula is any equation in which the next term is based on the previous term. So there's some kind of formula that tells you, okay, if I have a certain term, here's how I move from one term to the next. So for the geometric sequence, we multiplied by a common ratio to get the next term. For an arithmetic sequence, we added a certain common difference to get to the next term. But in general, you could have any pattern you want. It doesn't have to be just multiply or just add or subtract. So in function notation, we can say that each new term, a sub n, depends on the previous term. So the new term is a function of the previous term. And so a sub n represents the nth term, a sub n minus 1 represents the n minus 1th term, which is the term right before it. So the fifth term depends on the fourth term, and the twelfth term depends on the eleventh term, etc. And what this function is um, tells you whether it's geometric or arithmetic or some complicated mixture of the two. So problem solving tips. <clears throat> to identify a recursive pattern, we first check for a common difference or a common ratio. Those are the two easiest cases that you've actually already seen before. If it's a geometric sequence, then your recursive formula is very easy. Each term is the previous term multiplied by that common ratio. Okay, so this right here is your common ratio. And you've maybe not seen it written like this, but it is the exact idea that you already know and understand. Each time you multiply by r to get from one term to the next. Okay, if you have an arithmetic sequence, which we studied last semester, those generated linear, se uh, linear equations, then you take the previous term and you add the common difference. Now, if the common difference is negative, you're actually subtracting, but in general, you're adding or subtracting some number here, and that takes you from any term to the next term in that sequence. So this right here was your common difference. Excuse the poor handwriting. I'm trying to go quickly. So your common difference... However, besides these two that you already know, you can have any complicated formula. You just do whatever it says. If it says take the previous number and multiply it by 3 and then add 2, then you do exactly that, and you can follow that pattern each step of the way to get the next term and the next term and the next term. So let's do a couple of examples. Find the first five terms of each sequence. So we'll do problem number one. It says a1 is negative 11. So our first term is definitely negative 11. And then <clears throat> the equation that we're following, it says... Each term is the term before it minus 7, okay? And it says n is greater than or equal to 2. So we use this equation to generate the second term. So n equals 2 is the first time we apply this formula. Because n equals 1 is just straight up a given to us. So a sub 1 is right here. a sub 2, the second one, is going to be the first one minus 7. So negative 11 minus 7 is negative 18. Then we subtract 7 again, negative 25. Then we subtract 7 again, negative 32. And we subtract 7 one more time, and we get negative 39. And that's the first five terms. So this is actually what kind of sequence? It has a common difference, constant amount that we're subtracting each time. So this is an arithmetic sequence. All right. This one, just by looking at the formula here, <clears throat> you're taking the term, and you're adding 6.5. So this is going to be another arithmetic sequence. So we'll skip that one. Let's take a look here. This one is a bit more complicated. The first thing we do to find the next term is we take the previous term here and we multiply it by 3. Okay, So that kind of looks geometric. However, we then add 10. So this is actually a mixture of geometric and arithmetic together. Our first term, a sub 1, is negative 3. Now let's follow this rule. Multiply by 3 and add 10. So we multiply by 3. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 10 is actually positive 1. Okay. Then the next term, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 10 is 13. Next term, 13 times 3 is 39, plus 10 is 49. Next term, 49 times 3 is 147, plus 10 is 157. Okay. And so you generate each um, each next term by just following whatever that rule is. 
Uh, we're going to skip writing recursive formulas for each sequence because while it's easy to generate a sequence from a known rule, it's quite a bit more complicated to generate a rule from a known sequence. If it's just arithmetic, it's easy. You find the common difference. If it's just geometric, it's easy. You find the common ratio. But when it's a mixture and you're not sure exactly what's mixed together, it can be uh, a lot more tricky to do that. So maybe for honors or for uh, you know extra credit or something on honors on a quiz or extra credit on a quiz, I can I can put that on there. But for in general in the class, you just need to be able to take these patterns and follow them to to find out the next terms in a sequence. All right, that wraps up chapter eight. Um, there was a lot to this chapter, lots of exponential stuff, lots of um, growth and decay. But I can say that the most important thing that you're going to use both the rest of this year and in your future years in high school are those exponent rules from section one and two. Uh, so we're going to come back to those and do lots of review and extra practice. But if there's anything from chapter seven that you want to focus on, it's definitely 7.1 and 7.2. Alrighty, that wraps it up. See you in class.